The dimension of a given quantity is simply a way of expressing that quantity as product of other quantities raised to certain powers. Now, basically, in the study of dimension, our focus usually is uh, on the dimension of length, mass, and time. Here we use capital L, capital M, and then capital T, respectively. Here on the board, we've got this question where I am required to obtain a value of A, B, C. You can say that given that V is equal to K, L raised to power A, M raised to power B, T raised to power what? C. And uh, of course, from the question here, all right, it's about a plot gate strain, okay? V is the velocity, and then uh, K is a constant according to the definitions given here. In this question, L represents the length of the string m is the mass and then t this t this t is tension not time in this case take note please these symbols have been defined in this question that's a good thing about dimensional analysis so we are required to calculate the values of a b c so how do we do this is a simple concept all you just have to do here to get the value of these powers a b c all right is to put in the dimension of these quantities and then you can simplify using your knowledge of mathematics to get the value of ABC. Now let me just break the secret out here. Basically, we need the knowledge of indices. When you are dealing with dimensional analysis in the case of where you have powers like this type of question, uh, the knowledge of power rule of uh, indices as well as multiplication law of indices, these two are very important for us to know. So I'm going to solve this quickly. This is velocity. The dimension of velocity is Lt raised to the power minus 1. So in place of this V, I'll put in that dimension of velocity. This K, we are going to drop it when doing the analysis. Take note of this. When you are solving works on dimensional analysis, any constant multiplier or constant addend, you keep it aside. Are you following, right? You don't use it in your analysis. And then our L here, is length m is the dimension of mass this l is the dimension of length then this t okay we could have said it's time but it is not time here t was defined to represent tension and the dimension of tension is the same as the dimension of force because force and tension they are similar are you getting me right uh tension is the force in a, a, a spring or, or, or string as the case might be is that okay so I'm going to substitute the dimension of force in place of that of tension. And we know that force mathematically is mass times acceleration. So the dimension is going to be dimension of mass times dimension of acceleration, which of course is capital M for mass. Then times dimension of acceleration is Lt raised to the power minus 2, where that T there is time. Having said this, we are going to proceed to solve this. This is what was given to me. And so, like I said, we are going to drop our constant k. So, putting in the dimension of these guys, all right? Uh, velocity, the dimension is L series for minus 1. I'm going to forget about this k for now. Is that okay? And then, L there is already in dimension form. So, I'm going to write it raised to the power A. M is in dimension form. I'm going to write it raised to the power B. And then, this T is tension. I already explained that tension has the same dimension as force, and that is going to capital M, Lt raised to the power minus 2. Now notice that this tension is raised to the power C, so I will put power C here. Now at this point, we are going to apply uh, the laws of indices, power law of indices and multiplication law, which of course, uh, I want to believe we know about these laws already. If we don't already know about these laws, you can actually contact GMAS41 in order to get the video lesson on indices. You can also go through our playlist and you could find a video on it. Anyway, multiplication law of indices tells us that if you are multiplying the same basis, pick one of the bases and add the powers. And then power law of indices tells us that if a base has two or more powers, simply multiply the powers out. This power law of indices can still be extended to other forms, like if you have two bases being multiplied or divided, and they bear a power, that power can be distributed to these two or more bases being multiplied or divided. Is that okay? So power distributes over multiplication and division. 
that is another concept of power law of indices. So doing this, you're going to have L to raise to power minus 1. Come over to this, we have L to power A, M to power B. Um, okay, then opening up these brackets, you can see that this is M, L, T. Multiplication is what we have there. Now we have this power outside, we're going to distribute the power to this M, L, T raised to power minus 2. And that's going to give us M raised to the power of C, L raised to the power of C, and then T raised to the power of this t has power minus 2 already, so if you are distributing the c to it, you know the t will now have two powers. So it's going to be the multiplication of the two powers, minus 2 times c, which will give us minus 2c. Okay, so at this point you would notice that we have the same basis here. Take note that these are multiplied terms. Let me use a dot. This dot here, <laughs> I'm using it to represent multiplication. Is that okay? This ll, we can use multiplication law of indices, mm. Multiplication law of indices. If I do that, I'm going to get. Did you take notes? I picked one of the bins, L, and then added their powers. That is A and C. I got A plus C. Then picked one of the bins here, M. I had this and then added their powers, B plus C. Finally, we have T raised to power minus 2C. At this point, we are going to compare all right, both sides. If you look at the left hand side, you have L. On the right hand side, you have L. So you are expected to equate the powers. Is that okay? But quickly, let me just do something here. I am going to introduce N here. The reason is because on the right hand side, I have N. If you don't want to introduce it, no problem. Is that okay? No problem. But if you choose to introduce M to the left hand side, so that the same dimension you have on the left will be the dimension times you have on the right. You must make sure that you remain mathematically consistent. Don't go and change this question. So bringing in M as a multiplier, it's going to come with power 0. Use it to multiply L to raise to power minus 1 on the left hand side. I haven't changed this. M raised to the power 0 will still give you 1. 1 times L to raise to power minus 1 gives you back this L to raise to power minus 1. So I'm still in line. That is going to be equal to these terms here. So at this point, equating the powers of the same terms, let me start with that of t, because with this, it will be fast for me to get c. If I start with that of m or that of l, it will lead me to creating equation 1, 2, and likely 3. So it's best to go for the part where you have just one unknown, which in this case is the power of t. So starting with t, I am equating the powers of t on the left and on the right. On the left-hand side, I have minus 1. On the right, I have minus 2. So this is minus 1 equal to 2c. Okay, here I have minus 2c. And clearly from this, if you divide through by minus 2, you would see that the value of c is equal to 1 over 2. Correct, we have obtained the value of this constant power c. It is 1 half. I shall now move on to either m or l. At this point, I can pick any one of them because I know c now. Since I know C here, B is the unknown, I know C here, A is the unknown, so I can pick any one of them. But let me just go in order, taking from there, coming to the right, okay, coming to the left. Okay, so uh, we are equating powers of M. If I'm equating powers of M from the left, you have 0 on the right, you have B plus C. So 0 is equal to B plus C. And then, we know the value of C already, so this is going to give us 0 equal to B plus 1 half. Making B subject of the formula, I'm going to move this half, 1 over 2, to the left hand side. 0 minus half will give us minus half. And so I've gotten the value of B. Lastly, we are going to deal with the value of A, which in this case will be to equate the powers of L. So I'll come over here and do that. So we are equating the powers of L. On the left hand side, the power of L is positive 1. This L here is raised to the power 1. Are you following? And on the right hand side, we have a plus c. So that's going to be 1 equal to a plus c. And then this is 1 equal to a. The value of c is half. And then the value of a we don't know. So we maintain that a and put plus half. To make a subject of the formula, you collect half to meet this one. So that a would be 1 minus 1 half. Now, if you work this, the LCM, okay, this is a whole number, you are subtracting this fraction from it, the fastest way to handle it is denominator times this whole number. Whatever you get minus this one, 
because we have minus here. 2 times 1 is 2, minus 1, you will get 1. And so everything will be 1 divided by this same 2. You have gotten the value of A. The 1 minus half will give you half. And our problem is solved. You can now conclude that, therefore, the value of A, comma B, comma C is equal to 1 over 2, comma, and then B is minus 1 over 2, comma, and finally we have C, which is 1 over 2. So you see this is pretty simple. Is that okay? It's pretty simple. All you just need to know is the dimension of the quantities given here. And then, of course, remember your power law and multiplication law of indices. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe to GMAS 41's YouTube channel. Share our videos. Tell your friends about this channel. Invite them to subscribe to GMAS 41's YouTube channel. A wonderful concept from here that you can always learn.